bleeding into open wounds and it's just bleeding down your ankle. I can feel the blood dripping down my ankle. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance on hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. My loves, if you are still saying my intro with me, please give me a red heart. I love seeing and just checking out and seeing how many of y'all are still going in with me. <laughs> so good morning, good morning, good morning. Today we are doing the very highly requested my first day in prison video. I really appreciate you guys being patient with me when I take breaks in between certain topics because even though I have been out for 11 years, some of the things are still hard to talk about. It brings you back into those emotions and those feelings. And if you've never been to prison before, which I know that most of y'all haven't, I know that some of y'all have, it is not a fun place. Nothing about it is pleasurable. Nothing about it is relaxing. Nothing about it is fun. It is scary. Okay. So let's just get into what happens when you go to prison on your very first day. So when you get sentenced to prison in the county jail, all of these are my experiences. It may be different where you're from, and if anything is different, let me know down in the comment section. I love hearing, you know, what happens in different states and cities and countries and towns and whatever else, but I am going to be speaking a matter-of-factly from my experience in Florida, okay? So once I was sentenced, if you've never been to prison before, you start asking people, you start asking people in the county jail, what's going to happen, what to expect, what happens when I get there, like you're almost in a panic because you know you're going to prison and all that we know about prison is what we see on TV and in the news and it's already a scary place you know there's gonna be people there that have really 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 hurt people okay so you're terrified I was there about another week and then I got woke up in the middle of the night they wake you up they say get up grab your bag and go. They take you downstairs, you're rubbing your eyes, you're you're in your orange jumpsuit, still in the county jail at this point. You know, you don't know what's going, everything is very fast, move, move, move. Right then and there, they give you the option because when you go to jail, whatever you are arrested with, okay, so let's say I get arrested and I have my purse on me, my cell phone, my clothes, my shoes, you know, whatever. They ask you, do you wanna take it to prison with you? Which there, it's gonna sit in a box if it doesn't get lost and yes sometimes people's stuff get lost you know rings that you may have come up missing you know any you know your jewelry your id your money that you may have in your purse do you really want to take it to prison with you so it can sit for you know three years 10 years 15 years 20 years 30 years no matter depending on how long you have okay or you can sign a release to have somebody come and pick it up and i signed a release to have my grandmother come and pick up my stuff so you sign a release and then they handcuff you and they shackle you. Now the handcuffs are tight, okay? So they're putting them on your wrist. At this time you still don't know where you're going or I didn't. I had never been to prison before. I had, you know, all of this is a new experience. I'm woken up in the middle of the night, I'm signing a release. I know this is it, this is the day I'm going to prison. Your emotions are running high, you're kind of freaking out. You don't know, like this is happening now. Like there's no stopping it, there's nothing you can do it's on and popping, right? It's going down, you're going to prison. So they put your handcuffs on, they put your shackles on, and I'm telling you what, if you have ankles like mine or legs, I'm very thick on the bottom, my ankles are big. Those shackles, they put them on me and it clicks about two times, that's it, click, click, and they're so tight. Man, they rub against your ankles. My ankles were bleeding and raw. By the time that I got there it was so painful after they handcuff you shackle you they attach a chain around your waist a big thick chain it goes around your waist and that chain around your waist connects to your feet and your hands so you are completely shackled and chained up and you are walking like a robot because you can barely move your feet by this time the shackles on your ankles are rubbing the skin off okay and it's just 
cutting into you, cutting into you, and you're walking and your wrist hurt because they're not putting them on loose. It's not for comfort, okay? It's to keep you contained. You are a prisoner, a chained animal. You are nothing. Their jobs are to transport you, not to make you comfortable. Now, I don't want to hear nobody down below saying you shouldn't be complaining. Da, 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 da. I'm not complaining. I'm just giving you the facts of what happened. I'm letting you know the story, okay? None of it is going to sound like a day camp and sound like I enjoyed myself because I didn't. What happens is they take you into this warehouse like room and in this warehouse room are these garage like door things that shut but they're huge and you're and it's enclosed in it's dark in there and then there's a bread wagon like truck and if you don't know what a bread wagon truck is that's what we call it I don't know what the technical term is it's a truck in the front part but in the back part it's just a box and in the box are seats, okay? Like maybe four seats, four seats, four seats, four seats, four seats, four seats, two rows. And they file us in and we have to climb up in this bread wagon truck while handcuffed and shackled. And the way that you do that is basically rolling on your belly. So you've got all of these women. Some of these women are 60 years old. You know what I'm saying? Some of these women are older ladies and they have to roll up there. Ain't nobody helping them. There's no nice hand helping you in the back of that bread wagon truck. You have to roll and then you have to try to get, you have to stand up while you're all handcuffed and shackled and then you clink, 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 wobble over to your seat okay the whole time they're telling you shut up no talking don't say anything there's no talking there's no you know cheering each other on like this is a scary process okay so we get into the bread wagon truck and we're all lined up there and they close the back of it they lock it from the back and it's just us in the back there's no co back there because it's hot back there there's no ac there's there's no nothing the co's are riding in the front they have this little glass thing where they can see us but we're all back there in the heat and they're up in there with the AC, drinking their sodas, nice, good, and comfortable. We're back there sweating our butts off being transported. I'm in the back of this bread wagon truck and I'm already starting to feel claustrophobic. I mean, it's hot. I'm realizing that if, you know, your mind starts thinking all these things, like what if we get into an accident? You know, like think about that. You're on the interstate doing who knows how many miles an hour because you can't see. What if we get in an accident? What if this thing flips? What if this thing flips and catches on fire? You think anybody's gonna come and unlock us and let us out so we can run? So literally you're just sitting in there and you're just praying that you can make it to prison safely. Think about that. Think about the thought of you praying that you can make it to prison safely that's all you want in that moment by this time my experience i'm riding with a bunch of yos okay so there's a bunch of kids in there with me 16 17 18 year old kids i'm 21 at the time but i feel like i'm a mature 21 and they're cutting up back there they're cussing you can tell that they are going to be trouble in prison okay they start asking you you know everybody in there's talking i'm sitting there dead silent quiet because I'm actually pretty scared. I don't know what's going on. I'm looking at people and I see that there's like four or five kids, the YOs, they're kind of like, they're hyped. They're not excited to be going to prison, but they're hyped up because they're rambunctious and they start asking me how old are you i said 21 oh they're like oh bet you gonna be in the yo program you 21 you gonna be in the yo program and i'm sitting there quietly thinking man i hope i'm not in the yo program i'd rather be with the adults because i've heard stories about the yo program the yo program is crazy that's where the kids are that's where the people i think at 21 and under are so i was just at the cutoff point they have to go to school every day they have to do p tea every day and I have heard stories it's crazy they squat up on the CEOs over there they put a CO in a trash can before and lit it on fire they've locked CEOs in closets before because the YOs don't care you put a bunch of young kids together that's been thugging on the streets and tell them they're not getting out and they don't have that maturity level yet that's scary kids will squat up on you for real 
10, 15 of them. They don't care. That's how it works over there in the YO program. So I'm riding and throughout the ride, it's hot in this bread wagon and body odor starts to come out from everybody. People have to pee. People have to go to the bathroom and we don't know how far we're going. At this point, I don't even know how long we're riding hours in this bread wagon. You're exhausted. It is the middle of the night, but you can't sleep. You're so uncomfortable. You have to go to the bathroom. It's hot in there. It's loud in there. There's no respect. People are arguing because you've got the old timers that's been to prison before two and three times that want these kids to shut up. And these kids don't want to shut up. They're like, fight me. Everybody's handcuffed and shackled and you can't even cover your ears. And you're thinking, this is my life for the next three years. <laughs> that ride alone, anybody that's ever been there will tell you it sets the tone. The ride alone is awful, awful. I remember being in that bread wagon truck and having to pee so bad that I felt like my bladder was going to explode. Have you ever had to pee so bad that you can't pee on yourself because your whole entire body, your muscles are locked up and tense because you have to go so bad? There were women peeing on themselves. That bread wagon truck smelt in there like every kind of bodily fluid that you can think of, okay? It stunk and on top of it, like I've said, a million times it's hot so the heat makes the smell worse I spent the rest of my ride being in pain and uncomfortable but when we finally got there I was so exhausted I could barely move but I had to move I couldn't sit down and say I need to take a break can you take these handcuffs and shackles off of me let my ankles stop bleeding for a minute let me take a pee let me pee get something to eat and then we'll pick up and I'll do anything you want no it don't work like that as soon as you get there it's on and popping they open the back of that bread wagon truck and there's about seven or eight women there and these are big women and I'm not I'm not talking about the way anybody looks in a bad way I just want you guys to have an image in your mind we're talking about three four hundred pound big women and they're yelling get out of the truck get out of the truck and you're just really just trying to you know you're by this time your ankles are healing a little bit because you've been in the truck not moving but then they're starting to be cut open again and now you have these these shackles digging into open wounds and it's just bleeding down your ankle. I can feel the blood dripping down my ankle and I'm just trying to get out and then you get to the edge of the bread wagon and you have to figure out how to jump and not fall on your face because you're completely handcuffed and shackled. You get out of the truck and they're yelling at you, move, 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 and you're freaking terrified, right? Like, I'll do anything you guys want me to. Just, just tell me, like, don't, like, ah, don't yell at me. Like, I'm, I, like, you're, you're in complete shock and you're freaking out. You have a few women with you that have been there before. So they're chilling, but me, I haven't. And then you have those YOs that are bucking against them. F you, F you, and they're spitting back in their faces and you're thinking like, please just shut up so we can make this, you know, an easy process, but you've always in prison. You always got two or three that are going to make it harder on everybody, okay? And then the kids keep looking at me saying, yeah, you gonna be in the YO program with us. You gonna be in the YO program with us. And I'm thinking, God, please no, please no. After you finish with the transport, you get into the intake center. Really, it's just a bunch of rooms. Now, I want you guys to imagine these prison offices or intake or the dorms are all brick buildings, white brick. Everything is white brick. Very cold, very hospital-like vibe, but prison, it's not a hospital, it's not cozy, it's bricks everywhere. They get you in there and it's time to strip search you. They take your handcuffs and shackles off, they line all you up. Okay, you've got 20 women, it could have been more, and it's this, it's this warehouse looking room and there's a door on one side and a door on the other side and the doors are open. The door over on the left side has the door open and there's light peering in and I can see the fences, okay? It's not a private room. There's people walking in and out. They tell you to strip down. Me, I've never done it before. I strip down and I've got my little clothes on underneath and they're like, no, get 
your clothes. Take your clothes off right now. They're cussing. They are this far from your face. They are yelling in your face so bad they're spitting in your face, okay? So everybody at this point is standing with our backs against the wall, standing there butt naked. You're looking around. You've got women that are 65 years old butt naked. You've got younger girls that are butt naked. Everybody's butt naked. They come over. They have their gloves on. They pull your boobs up. They start touching under here. They're digging through your hair. They're in your mouth. They're, they're all around you and then here comes the bend over and squat and I've told you before this is one of the most degrading things I've ever been through. <laughs> now I don't mind bending over and coughing if I had to but the way they do it there is insane okay. You literally everybody turns around our faces are to the wall and we have to spread. Bend over and spread them. So you're grabbing your insides and you're spreading them and they're You've got multiple women walking around. They're yelling in your face, wider, and you spread wider. And they're like, wider, what the f is wrong with you? Wider, wider. And you're like, oh my gosh, I literally remember honestly being in pain. I was spreading my private parts so wide. And then you've got other people walking around and they're looking inside of you. And you're coughing and you're spreading and you're hurting and it's like, what is going on? Like this is what, you know, this is my first day. It's insane. When you're done with that part, they walk around, you put your hands out, they put this stuff in your hands and this is lice stuff. You have to put the lice stuff in your hair, under your armpits, you rub it all around. It's not something that you wash off and it feels like antibacterial soap or, or gel, you know? It's like this really nasty, it stinks so bad. You have to, like I said, put it in your hair, all over your body, your face, your private parts, everything. And then they don't let you wash your hands afterwards. And then they give you your prison blues. You put your prison blues on and it's time to go on and finish going through intake. The next thing you do is you go into the place to get your photo ID. So you're all standing in a line against the wall. You're exhausted. You've been riding in that truck. You've had somebody yelling in your face, cussing at you, spitting in your face. You know, you're dirty, you're hungry, you're thirsty, you still haven't peed. It's, it's, it's crazy. It, it's crazy. You're in pain. They put you against this wall and you're standing there and you're looking and you see a lady standing at a desk. She has a little computer in front of her and then a little screen against the wall that looks kind of like at the DMV when you go to get your, you know, your driver's license picture, your ID picture, and you have to go there and you stand there. And this takes actually a long time. You stand there, they make you put your hair behind your ears like this. <laughs> You know, you can't, you can't do like this. You can't smile. You can't even do like this. Your hair has to be behind your ears like this. Mugshot. Cute, huh? <clears throat> and then when they, after they take your picture, they want to know about every tattoo you have on your body, every scar you have on your body. They want to check it. They want to see it. They want to know everything. They put all of that in the computer, all your tattoos, all your scars, all of your aliases. If you have any aliases, your prior names, if you maybe, if you've been married, if you've ever been arrested and told them a fake name or used a fake ID, they, they document all of that. And then they give you a little ID card and it is your prison ID and on it is going to have a letter and then your prison number and on it is the first letter is a if you've only been to prison one time the next letter is b if this is your second time c if it's your third time d if it's your fourth time and it goes on and on and on i remember seeing ladies in there with f so it's going to say f and then your prison number and then your your height your weight and all of your stats and you have to carry this card on you everywhere you go. If you are in bed sleeping and you get up and go potty in the middle of the night, you have to put your tag on you to go potty, okay? So they let you know that right then and there. Don't ever be caught without your prison ID. It's very important in there. After you're done with that and everybody is done, everybody moves as a group. Nobody is going one at a time. So even if you're the first person to get through with everything, you're still there all day long. Intake is an all day long process, okay? Then you go into a room where they give you your handbooks. They give you these little white handbooks that have like a staple in it or whatever. And a lot of people end up pulling their staples out and later when they get to their dorm and they use those staples for different things. But it has 
staple in it and that's your handbook that is your rules your regulations all the stuff that's supposed to happen your rights <laughs> ah funny and then you go into a room and you have to sit down and you have to watch a video. You have to watch a video about violence in prison and it talks about relations in prison and it talks about your rights and the video is like a hundred years old and it's very boring and it's so outdated, but you have to do it and you have to get through it. When you're done with this part, everybody's gonna shuffle you and move you into laundry. Into laundry, you will walk by, you will tell the laundry worker, which is prison workers, what size you wear, what size shoes you wear, and they give you your extra pair of blues, your clothes, your underwear, your granny panties, your bra, which is the worst bra I've ever had in my life. It's this really thick white strap, and it's like a triangle over you, okay? It goes down like a triangle, and they're the pointy booby bras. You know what I'm talking about? So it's literally a thick strap, a triangle with the, they're so uncomfortable. You know, your boobs don't fit in it. They're spilling out the sides. They're the fronts all, you know, cause who's like, this isn't Madonna, right? Like our boobs aren't point, uh, anyways. So you get that, you get your socks, you get your awful, awful, awful shoes and you get a laundry bag. You put all of your stuff in this white laundry bag, you toss it over your shoulder and now it's time for the walk. Now it's time for the walk. They open the door and light hits your eyes for the first time in God knows how long. You've been in jail. You haven't been out in the sun. You've been transported at nighttime so you still haven't seen the sun. And that Florida sun hits your face and your eyes and it burns. And when they open that door and that light hits your eyes and you can finally see through, you look straight down and you see nothing but barbed wire fences on this side, barbed wire fences on this side, and barbed wire fences in front of you. And there is a cement sidewalk that you have to walk down. And when you walk down it, you start walking down. On your right side is a gate that has people in it. On your left side has a gate that has people in it. And it's a outside areas and everybody starts rushing to the gates to see who the fresh meat is and this is real true facts my friends they're coming up they're hanging on the fences they're looking at you hey girl hey hey girl you gonna be mine girl yeah you gonna be mine oh i can't wait to get that dang fresh meat they're looking at you and you're just walking with your bag over you and you're just like seeing people on both sides, people that look crazy, some that you know, people that look <laughs> like you definitely don't want to have to be their girlfriend, okay? So you're walking through, you're walking through. Of course, you got people that are in lines with you that's talking crap back to them. They're arguing through the fences. You haven't even made it to your spot where you can sit down yet, and there's already about to be a fight through the fence, and you're like, whoa, this is my life. You walk through. I made a left, and I went into the dorms that were over on the left. I went in. They told me to find a bed. I found my bed. I put my stuff down. I had to make my bed. And I sat down. I sat down and I looked around me and I'm looking around in this dorm, which is a big, huge white dorm. There's beds everywhere, just beds as far as the eye can see. And it's so loud in there. People are cutting up. People are, you know, arguing, but people are also laughing. You know, people are looking at you. They're whispering. You're sitting there on display. There's nowhere to hide. There's nowhere to get a, a private moment. You're just sitting in there. And I literally remember sitting and looking around and thinking my first time sitting, there's nothing that I can do. There's nothing that I can say, like I can't change this. Like, you know, I'm sitting there thinking like, I don't want this life anymore, like I, I, I you know, but there's, n I'm here. There's nothing you can do to get out. Once you're in there, you can cry a million tears. You can cry until you can't breathe, but you're not getting out. You are in prison now. Later on, after I sat there for a while, I looked around, they called for chow and I got to go to dinner. I didn't eat all day long. I didn't eat all night. Obviously I was being transported. They don't feed you when you're an intake or they didn't feed me. 
I later on went to Chow and that was my first time eating there and I realized you have to walk in a line. You go to the Chow Hall, you walk into this other hot room that's a cement room. It has all these tables in it, these round tables that have the chairs attached from the bottom, you know, the round chairs. It's like a stool that's attached to it. You go in, you walk past this. It's a completely brick wall, okay? I know a lot of the times on these television shows, it shows the Chow Hall looking like a cafeteria where you pick your food. That's not how it it really is not in the prisons that I've been at it is a complete brick wall nothing but bricks but out of it is cut about this far okay is cut an open window and it's just a flat bar like thing and there's trays on it you just walk by grab your tray from this brick wall with a slot in it basically and you go to your spot and you sit down and there's guards walking around they're yelling it's hot there's flies all over the place flies landing on your food you're trying to get the flies off your food they're landing on your nose they're landing on your face there's flies all over you and you're just trying to hurry up and eat while the guards are walking around yelling at you hurry up eat no talking hurry up eat two minutes two minutes one minute go 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 and you're literally walking with your tray to the place to put your tray up and you're trying to finish the last bits of food while you're blowing the flies off of you these big old horse like these big old flies too they're landing all over you man landing on your lips while you're trying to eat the flies are everywhere and then you're just hurrying up you're trying to get out you're trying to eat in your three minutes and then you go back to your dorm and then you go back to your dorm and you sit there and you don't know what to do what do I do? You know, you know, when you first get to prison, you don't have any money. So you don't have any money. You can't go to canteen. You don't, you, you don't have anything to do. Your first day of prison, you are just, you go through it. You're exhausted. You're tired. You're scared. You know, you don't have any friends. You don't have anybody to talk to on your first day in prison. It's very awkward. You don't know you know, what bathroom you should use, or, you know, you don't have a pen and paper. You don't know what you're going to do on your period. You don't know when you're going to get money, when you're going to get, you know, tr you know, transferred, if you're going to get transferred, who you're going to talk to your first day of prison. You don't know anything and it's scary. All right, guys. I hope that you like this video. Me explaining to you guys what the first day of prison is like. If you guys have any requests for any other videos, please leave them in the comment section down below. <sighs> I always feel so heavy talking about that. That was awful, guys. Awful, awful, awful. All right, my friends. <laughs> please don't forget to like this video. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Dreaming in the dark We are nothing more than dust